welcome once again to another exciting episode of Bona Red Sang. Yes, this is the only youth news and magazine show that gives you the platform to voice your opinions on any issue that may be affecting you and your community. That is correct. And remember that this is your show and your views are really important to us. So please do holler at us on our Facebook page, Bona Red Sang, or you can always tweet us at Bona Red Sang. To get more info on the show, you could always check out our active website. Make sure you guys use those contact details, but now let's find out what we have lined up for you on today's show. First up, we find out more about your right to accessing information. Then we give you the latest entertainment news on Umko, see? On Stramto, we explore your views on family. Then Bogoman Boba gives us his take on this week's news. We have that and a lot more lined up for you guys on today's show. But now, let's get straight into our Big Buzz story. Today, MC finds out more about how our rights of accessing information might just be taken away from us. The right to access information means that you have the right to know about anything that affects you. Hence, if textbooks are not delivered in your school or if police drag your dad, uncle or neighbor behind a police van, you have a right to know because it affects you. However, your right to know is at risk of being taken away. The Protection of State Information Bill is the bill that is currently in, uh, sitting with President Jacob Zuma that he will have to sign in due course. Um, the bill tend to or seeks to um, protect information that the state is holding the state has acquired. Uh, the secrecy bill will have a bad influence on me because government will now have control over the information that we have. It's not, it doesn't have a good impact in my life because we need to know the truth. Whether it's, whether it's good or bad, we need to know the truth. If the state of information bill basically acts, enacted, begs or should the information layers the Gupta saga. Because of an organization, if you tell information when from we tart, Valamesh, oh, I will know we will. Valamesh, Shone Police Station, so we share a call. Yabo, you're wrong. The media itself is actually taking the private lives of the people that are, at, that are of high esteem. They're actually taking advantage of by just going around telling lies because you know the media doesn't always give us the information that is true. Because the government has to worry about water issues, electricity, building of RDPs. Now, how can they do that when someone is busy breathing down their throat? They will control what we know and what we don't know. And we wouldn't be knowing of such key issues as the Gupta Air Force landing in the in the in the in our national key point. So yeah, that's bad. There are many other things that the government does that affect you, like education, safety and security, and transport, to name a few. You will know about the good work that the government does, but there is no guarantee that you will know about anything bad that the government is involved in. Mtoba Chapi, Bonareta. Thank you so much, MC. We really want to hear your views on this issue, guys. This does affect you in the long run. But now let's go straight into World WhatsApp and take a closer look at a sports controversy that has been happening on our very own continent. Football is known around the world as a beautiful game. But like when your dream girl stops putting on her makeup, beautiful things can turn ugly if not treated well. I'm the Champions League as a competition for European clubs. Well, I'd like to believe it's, uh, it's many clubs coming together playing football. Clubs from Spain and Europe. We know a lot about the European Champions League because we have easy access to the games on television. Africa has its own version of the Champions League known as the CAF Champions League. However, the tournament's reputation in South Africa isn't a good one. I do know that um, Africa's got a Champions League, the CAF um, Champions League, um, but I don't know much about it because it's not, um, it's not televised that much like in South Africa. I'm not a really big fan of soccer, but then I would watch it when South Africa is playing. 
We focus too much on what's happening in our own country rather than what's happening outside of it. So, I mean, that psyche alone kind of goes also into the football field. The Democratic Republic of Congo's TP Mazembe, which is one of the most respected teams on the African continent, hosted Orlando Pirates for the second leg of the CAF Champions League preliminary round in Lubumbashi, Democratic of Congo on Sunday. We didn't get to watch the second leg of the game, even though SIPC Sport broadcasted the first leg of the game to South Africa and the DRC in an exchange agreement that they made with the broadcaster in the DRC. The outcome was negative. Negative to the South African um, viewers, negative to um, CAF as a whole, because um, in the first leg, we allowed the DRC um, journalists to come televise the, the, the game. Imperialism comes into play when concerning the things that we watch. Like, you find the UEFA is much more televised than our own Champions League. I think it's a measure of establishment. We should take the, the competition seriously because if you j just look at, at the time when Bafana Bafana won their first and only Africa Cup of Nation, it was a year after Pirates had won the, the Champions League in 95. The last time Orlando Pirates made it through to the CAF group stages was in 2006. You know, I really didn't know that so much was going on in the world of the CAF Champions League. It's just, it's crazy. In my view, sports is meant to be enjoyed and is meant to unite nations. Yes, Ukin Lapozek, and we should live by the CAF motto, which is One Africa, because we truly are one. Well, news recap is up next, and Gino, our VR reporter, takes a look at very shocking statistics that affect you and your education. In a recent study, almost half the teachers surveyed could not calculate the following sum. 10 times 2 plus 6 minus 4 divided by 2. 46% of the teachers could not figure out that the answer to this tricky equation is 21 and not 11. In addition to that, teachers who belong to the Democratic Teachers Union were involved in a go slow protest on the 9th of April when schools in inland provinces reopened for the new term. They said they would not work outside their standard teaching hours and refused to mark the matric supplementary exams written in February. Educator and counsellor Shunamai Raduba explains what all this means. The effect that uh, striking teachers has on uh, learners is that um, the learners lag behind in terms of curriculum coverage and um, it can never be covered in any way. Um, and this is a problem, depending on the grade, because if a child is in grade 10 or 11, then they've lost uh, stepping stones to the, the next year. And if a child is in grade 12, then it d uh, disadvantages them um, to the exams that they're supposed to write. The general feeling is that pupils feel cheated of a good education. In terms of education improving in our country, I think it's still lacking a bit because we're still a developing country. I mean, comparing us to USA, we're still far behind. As in how thing we're learning, perfect, whatever, whatever, but then we're not actually 100% perfect, especially when it comes to maths and physics and all that, because some of us struggle, especially when we go to teachers, people will be like, yo, I must want to understand, like, what the hell? So, like, it does need an improvement. In terms of the education system, it can get more improvement, but they're already trying their best to get us improved by Saturday classes, which is a good thing. But then when it comes to us, we're going to think it's not a good thing to attend Saturday classes, but then it is helping, so it is improving. Now, we're not saying that you should give up on all your teachers and stop going to school. Just pick things up from where the ball was dropped and grab a study buddy and hit your closest library or check out South School on Mixit by following the links on your screen. Joe, remember guys, don't let this dampen your spirits towards education. Just make sure that you take it upon yourself to go the extra mile with your studies. Your future lies in your hands. Yes, but moving on guys, away from the classroom to the world of entertainment. Let's go and find out what the big names in the world of entertainment have been getting up to this past week. It's that time again for your entertainment news on Umgosi. 
In local entertainment news, The Unboard will be making their acting debut in a new sci-fi movie called Chappie. The movie will be directed by District 9's Neil Blumkamp and they are playing lead roles of themselves. Big up to the Antwerp, you guys are really making a mark for yourselves in the entertainment world. In international news, Latoya Jackson, Michael Jackson's sister, says she's been haunted by MJ's ghost, claiming that she can hear tap dancing in specific parts of her late brother's house, something MJ used to do every Sunday. According to reports, the family bodyguard has heard some unexplainable noises. Latoya, who looks like a ghost herself, is convinced that MJ's spirit is present. I'm man. The Jackson family seems to be living the thriller life. That's it on Umgosi for this week. Halala shine to the Antwoord, and I'm sure that that movie, Chappie, is going to be really interesting. And I have to tell you, PK, I'm really looking forward to it. But now, let's take a quick break. We have more informative action lined up for you guys right after this. Welcome back to Bona Red Zang. Yes, this is the show that keeps you informed about what's happening in and around your world. But if you've just joined us, you are just in time for Iskamto. With International Family Day being celebrated soon, on today's Iskamto, we find out more about what family means to you. In the modern South African context, there is no such thing as a perfect family. By 2011, only a third of the families in the country consisted of married parents with their children. We meet three young South Africans who have found happiness in the uniqueness of their family structure. Family for me is a very important thing because without them, uh, I, I don't have anything. They're the people that um, nurture me, that bang kulisa, and they make me who I am. Family is very important to me because, you know, without family, I believe you are nothing, you know, we, we support each other, you know, we're there for each other, we do everything together, you know, yeah, that's, that's just me and my family, you know. I think family is very important because without family, you can't be able to do anything by yourself. Uh, in terms of my sexuality, I didn't get to tell my family that I'm gay. For me, I don't think they literally, uh, did know I was they did know that I was gay but I didn't confess to them and tell them because I didn't think I would and I didn't feel Augusti I could tell them at uh, that time but I think now they are accepting because they appreciate me for who I am and they also look out for me a lot in terms of my security that I don't go out late when I go out I go with a lot of people and yeah you know, having kids has actually taught me a lot. And I also want them to grow up, you know, just being who they are and who they want to be, not who I want them, who I want them to be like, you know. Well, okay, the kind of life that I want them to live is, is a life of being free, you know, to talk to anybody about anything, especially me, you know, um, not being a closed book to anybody. and. Family should be very important to them because, you know, it's, without family, man, it's, it's not really, it's not really a good thing without having family. Uh, my family, we, we are from Cameroon and my daddy was here since 2005 and I and my mom and I and my two brothers, we just came here in uh, uh, 2010. The thing that I like about my family is uh, uh, how they treat us. And and the um, and the advice us to not do bad things. Okay, I wanna say that. Okay, it is nice to be with your family because without your family, you, uh, you can't do anything by yourself. Or without somebody like to support you from your family, you can't be anything. That was a reminder that no matter how your family is structured, they play a huge role in your life. So let's all make sure that we cherish our families. Next on the lineup is B Media Wise, where you guys get the chance to send us a video on an issue affecting yourself or your community. And today's clip is all about soccer. Good day. Soccer, soccer, soccer. What exactly comes to mind when you think of soccer? I mean, it takes me back to the AFCON which Nigeria won. Congratulations to Nigeria. But then again, we think of the 
um, up and coming 2014 Soccer World Cup, who exactly is going to take that? But that for you, my friends, is up to you to decide. But today my main focus is on the EPSA Premiership. And with Kansas Chiefs being eight points ahead of rivals Orlando Pirates, who exactly do you think is going to win? I mean, I mean um, Orlando Pirates has one game in hand. Chiefs is now on a rest, and that could be Chiefs' advantage. But behind me here, I have um, my Orlando Pirates fans and, of course, my um, Kansas Chiefs fans. And after doing research, I realized that majority of, of the people think that at least Kansas Chiefs has a better chance of winning the league. But this is up to them to decide and to predict. And hopefully, indeed, their wishes will come through. So my first question is to, the, to, to my Donald. Do you think that Kaiser Chiefs has a chance of winning this, being eight points clear of their rivals on Lando Pirates? Do you think they can, or do you think Pirates is going to snatch it up at last minute? Uh, this year, uh, this year it's ours. The only way Pirates can stop us, see we have a pass his bus there. Just take it and park it in front of the post. That's the only way. And do you think Pirates has a chance of winning? I don't think Pirates has a chance of winning because Pirates, like Chiefs can't drop their form in an instant. Mm, mm, it, their mm, form mm, keeps mm. on going, it's continuous, it's a continuous thing. Okay, I understand. And back here I have my Orlando Pirates fans who definitely are going to disagree. Do you think Chiefs should be more afraid of Pirates or flatten themselves? I think Chiefs should be very afraid of Pirates because if you look, it is their biggest competitor. Over the years, it has been a battle between Chiefs and Pirates. So I think that they should actually be very afraid because we are known as the last minute boys. No, yes. we might snatch it up mm. quickly. And do you think Platinum Stars is better than Orlando Pirates? Not at all. Okay, well, those are the opinions of them. And we leave it up to the 18th of May where the final result, result will be shown at the end of the season. Thank you so much for that video and just for sending in that clip, you have won yourself a Casio watch to the value of 500 Rand. Remember guys, keep sending in your clips. You can send them to our BBM, WhatsApp or Facebook. Post those clips and you can also win. Make sure guys that they are no longer than two minutes, please. Yes, but now let's move straight into Ring and Nazi and today we find out all about Yellow Bones. The, the term Yellow Bone, ekas, it means Intombazane, eh, eh, which is light in complexion, and yeah, most of the time she has to be thin, light in complexion. So I'm out some logo. But me now, in my terms, I, I wouldn't say I prefer yellow bone. I prefer just an African woman because most of the time I'm talking about my yellow bone. They they too full of themselves and stuff. Yeah, me now I'd say I prefer my yellow bone. The looks, the skin texture, but then mele have an end on them than a corner. She mustn't be like beautiful for my other. So the knowledge also must be there and the education, you see. As we in the chami chilo, I mean a angboni difference, go to yellow or dark. Mean what I see, umon tunji, umon to rase, as long as the personality grand, or right in your funda, or be grand. Of to be independent. That's what I can say. What I can say is that, like, if if Uchiri, then you yellow, and Uchiri, you talk, embrace who you are. And in Abatak, Santanda, and in Just like that guy said, love yourself the way you are. But right now, let's take a look at how you guys responded to last week's poll question. We asked you, do you think that we have a bright future in South Africa? 80% of you said yes. And this week we are asking you guys, do you think we have the right to know what our government is up to? Log on to our Facebook page and select yes or no on our Bonaretsang poll question post and we'll see what you guys think about this issue. It's now time for a short break, but when we return, Bugaman Boba gives us his take on the news. Hello everybody and welcome back to Bonaret Sang. Don't forget that we love to hear your views and opinions. So please join us on our Facebook page by clicking the like button or you can always drop us a tweet at Bonaret Sang. Tell us what's happening in your community. Next on the lineup is Koko where we meet young South Africans who are working towards their dreams. And today we meet a group of Bantula dancers all the way from Orange Farm. African Pantulas. Uh, 
I think that we are African bachelors because, like, back in our classing, Baba, back in like, coffee, like, back in our school, then in Rabatzi, we have a lot of fun. Every Friday, we have a lot of fun. African bachelor, the group, is we are participating in the group. So it's a well-known, it's a well-known Wow, it looks like those guys are really popular within their community. It's absolutely amazing. It is always good to be recognized for your talents. True that, Zach. But before we wrap the show, I'd really like to know what Obugoman Boba has in store for us today. So, Boguma Bugo, hook us up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to start this segment with a public service announcement. Children all over South Africa, in some cases even adults, are experiencing serious cases of Biba, Biba. Yes, my name is Boogerman Baba, and I'm going to give you a wrap up of the week's news. Justin Bieber is in the country and he's going to be rocking the country with concerts in Cape Town and Johannesburg. People are asking me, Boogu, Boogu, how do I know if my child has got Bieber fever? Well, it's very simple. If your child keeps saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, then they've got Bieber, Bieber. What's happening in the news this week? Scandal, 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 scandals. The group just landed an aeroplane at the Vatercliff military base without any legal permission. They had 30 flying squad members and 40 members of the SAPS escorting guests to a wedding. Well, the Guptas are bawling, y'all. Julius Malema has come out and said, the Guptas must be charged with high treason for putting the country's security under jeopardy. Guptas, can you please borrow me five rand? South African comedian Peter Dirk Ace has announced that he wants to start his own political movement. Well, Peter, you know I love you. You're my boy. But come on, man. The last thing we need is another comedian in parliament. Come on, we just had Julius Malema. Not another joke. Eleven people have been arrested for building hijacking in Johannesburg. This is insane. People are now hijacking buildings. We have taken hijacking to the next level, from cars to buildings, Baba. I mean, come on, guys. I hope this crime does not become popular amongst homeless people. Next thing, people will be getting kicked out of their houses, and Bugoman Baba will be left homeless in the streets. And finally, now moving on to some international news, Beyonce has announced that she wants more children. Well, if Beyonce wants more children, she must know that she is probably married to the wrong Jay-Z. Mshiniwam, mshiniwam. Well, anyway, that's it from us here at Bonnaroo Tang. See you next week, same time, same place. Hello, Black. Mshiniwam.